Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, today we're going to be adding the next villager profession house, the Leather Worker, to our Plains Village transformation project. And before we get into the video, remember to leave me a like because it helps me out a ton. And consider dropping a sub if you like what you see here. But for now, let's get this started and hop right into the video. Listen up, everybody. So far, we've been making some pretty good progress, but I think we got to step it up a little bit. And so today, I want to push our architectural style a little bit further, but before we can do that, there's been a lot of talk on my part about enclosing the entire village here in these massive fields. And that's going to take me a ton of time, and I have so many intro time-lapse projects that I need to be doing in these episodes. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let's get some progress done and roll that intro time-lapse. Oh yeah. So right off the bat, since my plan was to make more of these fields, I needed tons and tons of seeds and carrots. And I was all out of seeds, maybe 12 seeds to my name or something like that. So I decided to harvest my whole field because if you've ever done farming in Minecraft, you know that whenever you harvest your field, you get way more seeds than you need to replant them back. So I thought, you know what, I'll harvest my fields and it'll give me a great opportunity to fix all the damage that my villagers have been doing to the fields. And since our next profession is going to be the leather worker, I decided to put in a cow pasture right next to the sheep here. And I decided to do this right off the bat just to get a clear outline of where all the fields are going to be that are going to be surrounding the entire town. And since the original villages have cow pastures with a barn attached to them, I decided to make a little shelter for the cows here just with some water and food. And what I'll probably do is go back into the sheep enclosure and do the exact same thing just so that they don't have to be outside all the time. And once I had the cow enclosure down, I could get right to business and build myself some of these fields. And what I've ended up deciding is that I'm going to do an alternating pattern of the green carrot and potatoes and the yellow wheat. That way it'll be a bit more visually appealing when you come flying down into the village. And I gotta say, it's very, very satisfying looking to see all these crops get planted like this. And these fields take a really, really long time to make, so it's kind of a daunting thought to think about the fact that I've only made about half of them so far. But you know what, if it sounds way too ambitious to do, it's probably a project for me, so there's no way I'm backing down from this challenge. But I think it's time we hop into first person to check out what we've achieved so far. So ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on the other side. All right, we are back on the other side, and the village is looking really, really good here. I love the way this looks with all the massive fields stretching all the way around. And as you guys may have seen in the time lapse, I've bred up my sheep quite a lot here, and our sheep population is outnumbering our cow population by quite a lot, especially considering the fact that our current cow population is one horse. And so that's why I've got these nine leads on me and some wheat. I think there are a lot of cows over here that we can actually grab. And if you're wondering how I managed to have nine leads on me, well, let me just say that I'm a good friend to wandering traders. There's definitely no hostility or animosity between us whatsoever. In fact, they love me. I treat them very well. But it looks like we already have a ton of cows here that are really excited to come over and become captives. And you know what? We can grab four more, so why don't we just go and grab these guys as well? Uh-oh, we do have some mobs here, though. You will not stop me in my cow army! Aha! Okay, spider is on the move. We gotta go, we gotta go, cows, let's move it. And guys, I'm not proud to show this, but look at this massive shulker monster that we're already collecting. I even had to put down tons and tons of chests just to collect all the seeds and carrots and all the wheat we've been getting. We're getting close to your new home, guys. And I don't think we're gonna be able to fit them through the door here, so let's just break this off for now. Come on, guys. And now I think we can just right-click all these guys. Uh-oh, we're gonna breed them as well. And listen, there's nothing wrong with looking a little bit different. Some of us are just built different, you know what I mean? But I think this is looking good, though, now that we have lots of animals making this place feel a little bit more alive. But ladies and gentlemen, today I've been talking about the fact that I want to build the leather worker's house. And I'd also like to take the time to build a well right here because in the vanilla villages, they do have wells. And I think we can improve that design quite a lot. But for now, let's focus our attention on this area right here where we want to build the leather worker's house. And with all the houses going forward, I really want to improve on this style we already have. Like these buildings are fine and all, but I think we can go bigger and better for each one. We make. And so first off, we got to choose a shape, and I want to do something a bit different from both of these houses. And I've talked to you guys earlier about the fact that when you build in this game, you're basically just putting together different size boxes. And so today, I want to create some kind of L shape for this building. And so in the end, this is going to be our winning shape. A good way to go with houses is always one of these L shapes. You can never really go wrong that way. And then we're going to have a tower right here. But I think a small tower is going to be a good way to improve the architecture that we already have going. And I'm going to make it very easy for myself here and create the 
the exact same box we've been using for the base of each of the other houses. So I've got my basic box here and I've done all the texturing going all the way around. And over on this side, I brought this part that's going to become the tower out a little bit. And I think we'll worry about that last, so we're not even going to touch that for the time being. But I think the way I want to do this is make the leather worker run a shop here in front. So we'll put the entrance to that right here. And then I think we'll put the entrance to the residence right here. And we'll just have a staircase coming up and around the actual shop. So I ended up with something like this. And we'll elaborate a little bit more on the shop front once we're actually designing the shop. But for now, I think I want to get some of the stylistic staples in. And this facade right here is something I've been using for both of these other houses. So I think I'm going to use this one, but we're going to iterate on it a little bit. So let me just get these ready and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So now we've got something that resembles pretty much a carbon copy of this style. And as I explained, what we're going to be doing is sort of slowly creeping away from this style to create something different. And the first way I think we can do that is to just instead of using stripped oak back here, we can just use some spruce planks. And for these parts with the windows, we can maybe use some of these spruce stairs. I think that looks pretty good and it makes these houses just a little bit different, you know? Now we do have quite a few of these empty faces of the house and I think we just want to add some windows to these. So we'll just do the exact same thing we did with the spruce stairs. That'll be perfect. So that breaks up that nicely, but I think we've got some on the other side here as well. And this one I think I want to keep empty just so I can show you guys what I do if I have something like this and I need to cover it up without using windows. This side, however, is so symmetrical that I think it would look really good if we had one. Excelente. Now that we've got all the walls in, let's actually put a roof on this thing so it doesn't look so derpy. And to keep the style consistent, we're just going to go with the exact same roof style, nothing fancy, we'll just do something a little bit different once we're doing the tower. The roof is in and the town's already looking a lot better and I got a bit of a tip for you guys. We gotta put the chimney somewhere and since we have the tower right here, we don't want it to look too cluttered. So I'm gonna put it somewhere towards this side. That way we don't have too much going on in too tight a space. The chimney's in and everybody's cooking. All right, now we can finally focus our attention on the tower here and I think we wanna bring it up quite a bit more. I think something about this tall, that way it'll be the tallest thing around. And I think I'm gonna want windows all the way way around on this thing. And for towers specifically, I usually think fences are better looking windows than the glass panes. Yeah, I think this is going to be the perfect height. And so I'm going to show you guys a roof style that I usually use on towers that are a three by three like this. And so all you got to do is place upside down stairs like this on each of the sides. Then you come in with your slabs on the corners like this. And after that, you're going to have to place a temporary block just so that you can get your right side upstairs like this. And we'll do that on all four sides. Next up, we can just cover Cover all this in spruce planks, get some slabs on each of the four corners and raise these up another block. Then you got a layer of stairs. And after that, we just need one block coming up. And so unfortunately, we don't have wooden walls quite yet in the game. So you're going to want to place a granite wall and then two of these spruce fences on top. And if we really wanted to get fancy with the detailing, we can put a trap door just under like that to ease that arch a little bit. But now that we have our pretty spiffy looking tower design, we need to bring this texturing all the way up. And since we've got such a tall feature like this tower, I think we want to do our texturing sort of in layers. So we're going to do mostly cobblestone towards the bottom, and then we're going to ease it into more and more andesite. See how we've got way more cobblestone towards the bottom, and I think we want to do the same thing with the stone bricks here. Maybe we'll pop one in here. We just want to make sure it looks way more broken down towards the bottom. And just to add another color, we're going to add some stone, but only towards the tippy top. And we're not going to add a lot of this stuff either. It's only going to be a little bit. Okay, I'd say I've done a pretty good job here with the texturing. But definitely keep gradients in mind, guys, so that you can do something similar in your worlds because it makes your builds look a lot better. And you know what, guys? I think we can do even better because I found a few of these mossy blocks lying around. And maybe if we knock a few of these out, we could do something with them. And we're not going to want to spam these mossy blocks. I think we want to space them out quite a bit. But maybe just something like that. Pretty subtle and not too much. But I still think it adds quite a lot. And in the standard villages, I know they use mossy cobblestone quite a bit for the bases, so this does fit in with the theme quite well. And you know, while we're at it and just adding details to this area, I think we want to do a bit more here for the tower. Because we could do something super simple here and just place a stair, oak leaves, and do some signs on each of the sides. And then we can pop a flower pot with an azure bluette up here and just finish it off with a fence gate that's opened up like that. I think that makes for a really, really nice little flower box. And at this stage, I'd actually call our tower finished. Finished. But you know what? I actually really like how that flower box came out. Let's do something similar right here. And we've got a lot more flower boxes to add, but look at the skyline of the town right now. It's looking so awesome. Having a tower to break it up every once in a while like this is just such a good idea. 
So let me get these final touches in order and we can take a look at the finished product. And earlier on, I did say that I'd give you guys a tip for if you have a space that looks like this. And the easiest thing you can do that looks super duper awesome is just add some vines that are climbing their way up the wall. And something super simple like this will do. I just mixed up a few of the oak leaves and some spruce leaves, but I think we want to add a bit more detail. And previously I've used some flower pots and poppies, and I think I'm going to add it on top of each of these oak leaves and see what it looks like. And so just like that, it looks like we've got a rose bush climbing its way up the wall here, and it's a great way to fill some unused space. In fact, I'd say that this is probably the best looking face of the house just because of that. Oh, and guys, as I've been building these things, I've been adding the pathways throughout, and it's so satisfying to be able to just connect up some of the pathways you've been making. Now, before we get to tackling the interior, I want to take care of the shop front here and make a little bit of an awning. And to do that, we're going to need some wool. And we seem to have an intruder in our sheep enclosure. Oh, well, at least he's stuck so we can keep an eye on him. But let's get our hands on some wool here. Would fortune actually work on wool? Like, would you get more wool per shearing? I have no idea. So let me know in the comments. But I actually went and got myself some brown dye from Ventia. So let's make ourselves some brown wool, maybe a few carpets as well if we can actually craft it there we go and so what i'm thinking we'll do is just have some fences like this we'll do every other one white and every other one brown and then we can just add a layer of string like this that'll be pretty much invisible and we could just put the same color of carpet down like a soul. And the final bit of detail that's going to make this look really good is just placing down some lanterns because I'm imagining it could get a bit dark under here. And hey, maybe we'll put one over here as well for symmetry. And so this is going to be the final product. And I think this is awesome because we're going to be able to make this street kind of a shopping street. And I know brown's not the most exciting of colors, but I had to use it since it's the leather worker. And we'll get some more exciting colors in there later. Now, I'd like to get started on this well design here but before we do that let's check out the interior that I've been working on and first up we've got the leather workers shop so any items you can craft using leather in the game or that seem leather like like a saddle is what's going to be on sale here in the shop and I also got a reason to craft some leather horse armor which is awesome I wish you could actually dye the leather horse armor like the leather clothing that would be epic but we've got a little spot here for our shopkeeper to stay and what I'm thinking is we're going to put a cauldron down here so that the villager is going to turn into a leather worker and so I've got myself a few cauldrons here in my inventory and we'll see what happens if we just place one down. I'm not even sure if we have a villager that doesn't have a profession around so maybe we're going to have to make one. So since we don't have one I think we need to use our villager breeder here and I've set up the track to go outside so we can grab our little villager in a boat. Okay I've made some slight modifications to the pickup system here. Hopefully it works this time. I think it's the fourth time I'm trying. I'm not keeping count. It's not working. Okay this time it should work. Yes okay I needed the powered rail. That's what was wrong. Can we get another? Why not? Let's Let's try oh yes villager number one stuck in a boat let's get villager number two out perfect we now have them in their boats let's see if we can boat this guy over to the leather workers house and i've got kind of a neat idea of what we can do with the other guy to get him to get the job we're just gonna have to trust that you're taking the job buddy okay he's doing it he's taking the bait i don't know why perhaps we can inch you closer to the house here come on please go in and take the job that's what i want no who would have thought villagers were going to be a massive pain to work with? Buddy, please go in. Take the job. Take the job. Come on. You've got a cauldron right there. Fine. We're bringing over villager number two, and hopefully he's a bit more enthusiastic about his profession. Row, row, row your boat gently down the plains. Merrily, 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 villagers are insane. One of you go and take the job. I didn't realize this was going to be such a headache. Yes, yes, no, no, please don't leave. Come on. Yes, do it. Yes, come on. Yes. Close, close. Okay, you're stuck. Please. Please be stuck. You are stuck. Now, if you would take the job, that would greatly please me. Did he take the job? Did he? He took the job. Oh, you guys don't even know how long it took me to get this guy in here, and he finally has the job. Okay. As a reward, good sir, you get some water in your cauldron. Maybe this will entice some of the other villagers to come visit you in here, although I kind of hope that they won't because you don't deserve it. So listen, guys, clearly it's not this guy's dream job to be selling stuff in here, but that is going to be his job for the rest of time. That is your sentence, good sir. <laughs> But if we come through the doors here, we get to the actual residence. These doors here just lead outside to the entrance here. And we've got a big staircase coming up into the one room. I decided to make this place pretty cozy. We've got some boxes. We've got a cute little bunk bed right here. Perhaps this is the kitchen area overlooking the oasis. You got a pretty nice view. And then if we walk through here, we've got the little one by one hole that leads up the tower. And this way, I guess you can keep an eye on the cattle and the sheep, although it's pretty difficult to see through these fences, if I'm honest. And if 
you make a tower like this, always put a lantern or some kind of light source so it shines through the windows at night. It makes it look a lot better. But overall, I'm very happy with this interior. Something super simple. You don't have to go crazy every time, guys. I mean, I went crazy enough getting this guy to where he is. Oh. Now, next up here, if we get lucky, we can actually get the other new villager we got to choose the leather worker profession. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how we're going to try to do that. So let's first choose where we're going to have this well. I think we want the middle like right here. And we only have a three by three, but to give the illusion of more space, we're going to use some walls here. And then we're going to do cobblestone walls. Maybe we'll texture in some of these andesite walls since I don't have too many cobblestone walls. Yeah, something like that's going to be perfect. I think we need to dig this out. Maybe we'll do something interesting at the bottom of the well. I'll have something beneath the town here. You guys will have to tell me if you want to see something like that and we could do it in an intro time lapse. Definitely let me know. Yeah, we can uh, plop down our water. And I think we want to do something like this. This could look good. But since I'm kind of running out of blocks, I guess we'll use a few of these mossy blocks as well. And now for the little roof of this thing, I think we can just go double slabs like this. Now the trouble is how we're going to do this. Maybe we can put the stair blocks like this. And then we can just do a slab up top. Something like that. Let's see how this is looking from a distance. Ooh. Yeah, I like this well. This is probably the design we're going with for sure. And here's my little trick. So to get this guy to actually take the job, maybe we can hang a cauldron from here and hopefully he can reach it. Okay, I'm not sure if they can actually reach this block. We'll hope that someone does in the future. So let's actually just put a cauldron in this kitchen up here. It'll probably improve the area, but anyway, if we do something like that, maybe he'll come up and choose the job immediately. Maybe, oh, 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 it looks like he's doing it. Come on, choose the job. Success. All right, now we got some leather workers. Okay, guys, I've done a bit of texturing here, put some mushrooms and some Azure Bluettes in since they're my favorites, as you guys know. And I think the well area here is looking really, really good. My plan for the village here is that we don't want any of these big open plains areas like this. So if we have any areas like these spots over here, we wanna definitely fill them in with a bunch of bushes and ferns and stuff, just so that everything will look nice and complete in the end like all this stuff. But guys, I'm super duper happy with the progress we've made in this episode. If you enjoyed this one definitely leave me a like it helps me out a ton and you know what if you stayed all the way to the end then you're the champ and i appreciate your existence and until we see each other next time have a good one